with Jesus Christ. So what about us? As we hear this story and think about what makes a good Sunday morning experience, do we want an encounter with Jesus Christ? Uh, Some people might say, well, actually, you know, that's not really possible. I remember as a child, and I was a child growing up in a vicarage, my dad was a vicar. I remember as a child hearing about somebody in our church who said they'd had a vision of Jesus. And I remember thinking, that's just not possible. He's, He's making it up. But why should it be impossible? After all, history is full of stories of men and women who've encountered the living Jesus Christ. Think of St. Paul on the Damascus Road, or the saints and famous Christians down the centuries who've encountered God in Christ. And today, actually, whenever anyone offers themselves to be ordained to get the dog collar, one of the first questions we ask them is, have you been called by God? Have you encountered Jesus Christ and felt called by him? And if we had time, I could tell you about experiences in my own life when I know that I have encountered God. And perhaps that's the same with many of you. Perhaps you could also talk about times when you have experienced um, God yourself. Except the problem is we're often too embarrassed. We find it a bit awkward to talk about our experiences of God. So, Do we want an encounter with Jesus Christ, with the living God, this morning? For some people, the answer might actually be no. No, I don't want an encounter like that. After all, it might upset our comfortable lives. The rich young ruler, remember, was challenged to sell all his possessions. Not just some of them, but all of them. Such a demand on us might just seem a bit too challenging. Or the woman with the flow of blood who was healed by Jesus, she tried to sneak up to Jesus without anybody noticing. But Jesus made her stand up and identify herself in front of everyone else. Many of us here might feel a bit embarrassed to be identified as a Christian among our friends, our neighbors, our colleagues, among people at work. Or then again, think about the Pharisees. Whenever they encountered Jesus, Jesus showed them up as hypocrites. And which of us actually want our sins publicly pointed out? And so many of us come along to church, but we don't really, truly want to encounter God. Which is a shame, because actually we see in the pages of the Bible that such an encounter brings to the blind sight, to the lame strength, to the sinner forgiveness, to the hungry crowd's nourishment, and to the fishermen mending their nets, a life-changing call to an adventure that would take them on the journey of a lifetime. And to us today, an encounter with God can bring meaning for those whose lives seem empty and hollow and pointless, and love for those who feel rejected and unloved and unlovable. Direction for those who wonder what on earth this life is all about. Belonging to those who feel isolated and lonely. And freedom for those who are trapped in prisons of their own making. And aren't those things, all things worth happening? So do we want an encounter with the living Jesus Christ this morning? And then finally, there are other people who believe that yes, an encounter is possible and that they long for such an encounter, but it just never seems to happen. They come along to church week after week, they hear the same notices, sing the same songs, but actually they never seem to encounter God. So how does such an encounter actually happen? Well, we can find out by looking a little bit more closely at the story of Simeon and Anna and Mary, and Joseph. And as you look at that story, we find five things. First of all, we find that Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Simeon was waiting and longing for God to do something. Now, we're not always very good at waiting, Uh, We rush around and and fill our lives with all kinds of things to keep us busy. And that's especially true, I think, when we turn up on a Sunday morning to church. There are things to to get ready, 
Uh, there are cups of coffee to put on, be made. There are friends to catch up with. But Simeon waited. He waited for God. And Anna, as we find in the Bible reading as well, had been waiting for God from her youth until she was 84 years old. If you want an encounter with God, the first thing you must do is wait. Wait with patience, in expectation that God might turn up. We need to come to worship quietly and stilly with expectancy. I've been on crutches for, for, for quite some week, um, weeks now, and it's, it's hampered my life a little bit, but actually I had the best Christmas morning ever. Because I didn't do a midnight service, so I wasn't tired. I wasn't doing a Christmas morning service, so I wasn't stressed. The kids were old enough not to wake up early, and out inside, on, there was no traffic on the roads at all. So I got up at 7 o'clock in the morning, and for half an hour, there was complete stillness and silence. And I was able to enter into that stable with the baby Jesus and encounter God through still, quiet waiting. The second thing is that Simeon was someone upon whom the Holy Spirit rested. We see that again in our Bible passage to whom something had been revealed by the Holy Spirit, who had been led by the Holy Spirit. Whatever else we need for an encounter with God in Jesus Christ, we need to be people who are open to the working of God's Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. That's been the prayer of Christians down the ages since the very birth of the Christian faith. And perhaps we could make that our prayer as we gather together on a Sunday morning. Come, Holy Holy Spirit. And then thirdly, Anna wasn't simply hanging around the, the temple. She was worshipping and fasting and praying. If we want an encounter with the living Jesus Christ, it certainly helps if we set our hearts and minds on him through worship, through prayer, and through fasting. But these things aren't always easy. So many other things can crowd out and get in the way. I don't always find it easy myself. So every, probably about three years, uh, I set aside a week to eight days to go off to North Wales to a place uh, which is set in beautiful scenery to spend a week or eight days just in complete silence to pray, to worship, to read the scripture. And as I do so, I encounter God. So we've got three things so far. First of all, like Simeon and Anna, we wait. Secondly, we ask for God's Holy Spirit. And thirdly, we fast, worship, and pray. Then fourth, I'm rather intrigued by the fact that Jesus, of course, was very, very young. He was just a tiny, tiny baby. But Simeon and Anna were very, very old. Now, sometimes we talk about all-age church. And I don't know what all-age church is like here in Bushmead, but in the churches that I go around about the diocese and elsewhere, sometimes it seems quite an uncomfortable experience uh, for the younger people as they're forced to stand up at the front, feeling terribly embarrassed as they hold up visual aids in front of everybody, and with older people who are forced to sing songs with uh, silly actions. <laughs> but the encounter of Simeon and Anna with the baby Jesus was neither of these things. It was an occasion for the young Jesus to be blessed by the presence of these old people and for Simeon and Anna to be blessed by this baby Jesus. And this tells me that actually we're more likely to encounter God when we're open to the work of God through people who are very different from ourselves. People of different ages and generations. People with different backgrounds and experience. People with different abilities and genders and ethnicities and ages. I was a parish priest for uh, 10 years and we did some quite nice things in the church. But one of the things that made me most pleased and thankful and grateful was when we gathered together on a Sunday morning and I looked out across the congregation and we had people of every single decade of age. So we had the noughts to tens, 
the 10s to 20s, the 20s to 30s, the 30s to 40s, right up to those uh, in their 80s and 90s. Not a decade of age was missing. And through that, I believe we were able to encounter God more clearly. And so it seems we encounter God when we wait patiently, we ask for his spirit, we worship fast and pray, and we're open to God working through people very different to us. And then fifthly, neither Simeon nor Anna would have encountered Jesus if Mary and Joseph hadn't brought their child to the temple. Right at the beginning of that reading, we read, when the time came for the purification required by the law, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. You see, Jewish life in those days, um, and still very much today actually, is punctuated by um, kind of rituals and ceremonies. Uh, keeping the Sabbath, uh, regulations about what kind of food you can and can't eat, uh, rules about purification. And in particular, at the time of Jesus, after a child was being born, the mother was considered ritually unclean for 40 days. Or if the child was a girl, 80 days. Uh, during this time, she couldn't enter the temple. But then finally, when this time was over, she was permitted to go back into the temple, provided she made an offering, a sacrifice of a lamb. Or if, like Mary, she was too poor to offer a lamb, then two turtle doves or pigeons. It was because Mary and Joseph were performing this simple religious ritual action and performing it in obedience to God that they met Simeon and Anna, who in turn encountered Jesus. Now, since the Protestant Reformation, the church has been very suspicious about ritual, or at least ritual just for the, the sake of doing the ritual. But actually, it be, can be through faithfully, obediently, performing these simple ritual actions that God's spiritual life is taken into our ordinary, everyday lives. Think about the, the communion, the Eucharist. The very ordinary bread and wine receive spiritual meaning by a simple ritual act of holding out our hands and receiving. What baptism, that very ordinary water poured upon the head of the child, receives spiritual meaning as we perform that simple ritual action. And then throughout our lives, some people, when they pray, they kneel. Other people cross themselves. Some people like to light a candle. Others say grace before meals. All these simple ritual actions bring us closer to God's presence. So I wonder what for you makes a good Sunday morning experience. Maybe you still uh, really want uh, nice music and uh, a short sermon and decent coffee. But there may be those of us who answer, actually, I want an encounter with Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And if so, we can follow these examples of Scripture. Wait patiently and expectantly. Ask for God's Holy Spirit. Devote ourselves to prayer. Be open to God working through people very unlike ourselves and faithfully fill our lives with simple rituals that draw us nearer to God. I could stop there, but just one final thought. I wonder if there's a sixth thing as well. You see, many people never dream of coming to church I wonder how many people out there this morning in this little estate in which you're based were walking past and suddenly thought to themselves, you know what, I think I'll go into church. Of course they don't. Should they? Why should people out there um, turn up to church? St. Albans Diocese, we have our vision of living God's love with its three strands, one of which is making new disciples. And one, uh, and, but my question is, why on earth would anybody out there ever want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ at all? Well, my guess is if you ask the people at the time of Jesus, they would have said it's about good news. It's about Jesus bringing good news into people's lives. But this isn't just good news of sharing Christian beliefs, the, uh, the doctrine of the God of creation, uh, the theology of the um, incarnation, and that wonderful gift of the atonement. No, for them... The good news meant an encounter with God, an encounter that changed 
their lives. People out there will come into church if people in here are encountering God. But my sixth point is this. How will people out there ever encounter God and discover the good news unless we are inviting them in? I wonder, when was the last time you ever invited anybody into church on a Sunday morning? Was it a couple of days ago? Was it last week? Was it sometime last year during 2018? Maybe it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. Maybe it was never. So I wonder, what makes a good Sunday morning experience? I believe it's encountering God in Jesus Christ. So I wonder, are people encountering God in Christchurch, Bushmead? Let us pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can encounter you in Jesus Christ. We can encounter you and have our lives changed and transformed by that wonderful uh, good news of his presence. We pray that this place would be calmer evermore, a place where people are encountering you. And we are inviting them in to experience that encounter for themselves. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Or do we just expect God to know what we want? Are we ready to wait, possibly for many, many years? And do we find time for God? Could we be silent for God? I asked my husband to come this morning. Um, I asked him to come many mornings.